eating and drinking are vital to living in the woods. But you know, cooking in the wilds isn't just about survival. If you're roughing it, you're doing it wrong. This hole in the ground is going to be an oven. We call this a hangi or an imu pit. And the way we cook in this is with rocks. We're going to heat these rocks on a fire built over this pit. And when they drop in, and they're good and hot, we put our food on top, put this rush mat over the top of the hole and seal out all of the air with the soil. Remember, you always need permission before you light a fire. It's really important when you choose your rocks that the rocks are dry. If the rocks are damp from riverbeds, they're flinty or concrete, they might explode. Even so, even with dry rocks, it's a good idea to back off once you're heating them. While the rocks are heating, I'm going to prepare a rabbit to cook in the pit. What I've got is some large burdock leaves to wrap the rabbit in and keep it clean. And I'm going to stuff it with some hedge garlic leaves. These will just give it a nice subtle flavour. Putting in stones back in the hole now. I've got rid of most of the embers. Nice lining of stones in the bottom of the pit. And now we can put the rabbit in. A few more rocks. Now some of the smaller rocks can actually go on the top. Now we're going to seal the heat in with the rush mat. And we put the soil over the mat to keep it airtight. It keeps the heat trapped in there tight. So that's the oven ready. The pit's closed, it's going to take a few hours to cook. But one of the nice byproducts are these embers. And with those, I can do some home baking. I'm going to bake a loaf called a damper. It's an Australian type of bread. And for that, I'm going to need water, flour, and milk powder. For our oven, we're going to use another billy can itself. With three small stones, I'll put these inside the lid and the lid of the smaller billy can on top of them so that they're raised up. And in here, I've put a layer of flour to stop the dough sticking or burning. And now, the main billy, this time upside down as a lid, and there we have it. A little oven, all ready to go. This is where the embers come in useful. I just rake them back a little bit, like this. We can place our ready-made oven straight in amongst them, like that. We leave that for about an hour. We should have a beautiful loaf of bread. Wonderful. There you go. A perfect loaf. You know, there's nothing quite like baking outdoors. And if there were wild berries available, we could put them in here too. Some wild strawberries would go down really, really well. Lovely. Ooh. Well, it's been a good few hours since I sealed the oven. I reckon the rabbit should be done about now. I've got to be really careful as I uncover this. Already, I can feel the warmth from the oven coming through. You can see how a mat enables us to roll the dirt away really very easily. The rocks are still warm, but I can handle them. I just lift them out carefully, and here is our rabbit. Now's the moment of truth to see if our rabbit is cooked properly. Of course, these leaves are edible. That looks quite delicious. Beautifully cooked. Oh, yes. That's great. 
But before we finish here, we're going to clear it away like a good woodsman. No sign that we're ever here. Yeah. If there's one thing we take for granted in Britain, it's water. But I've been in many places where water can surround you, but not a drop of it be safe to drink. So today we're going to look at some ways of finding safe drinking water. Charcoal is a really good purifier. We'll take some of this with us for later. And here we are, we've come down into a boggy area. It's a bit heathy. There are lots of birch trees, which are also a good indicator that there's water likely to be around. Particularly though, in boggy areas, you find this wonderful plant. This is sphagnum moss. A green beddy jewel looks springy, like a, a mattress. Now, this particular plant is really useful. It contains a lot of water. And it has a sterilizing effect on the water and can make it pure. It's even been found that sometimes you can reach into the peat underneath the moss and it can be very deep. And squeezing out the moisture of this, first it's muddy, then it goes clear. And when it goes clear, you see it clearing there, that can sometimes be sterile water. But for our purposes, this is a real friend because with this we can make a filter to carry with us to purify other sources of water that we find elsewhere. So we need two ingredients from here. We need the ordinary moss itself and we need the peat from under the moss. And there are only two other things we need. We need the charcoal we had earlier and a bottle or some sort of container. Okay guys, bottle and charcoal. Brilliant. There's the charcoal. We can mix that with the peat to, in our filter. But first of all, we need to prepare this bottle. Okay, this is gonna be a column filter. In here, we're going to put layers of materials we've gathered. So at the bottom, we must make some holes, and at the top, we need to open it up so we can pour in dirty water. Now we're ready. First thing we do is we take some of the ordinary moss. Pop that in the bottom, push it down really tight. That's great. Now, we take the charcoal and the peat, mix the two together. Charcoal and peat go in. Again, push it down tight. Lastly, cap it off with some sphagnum moss. There is our filter, ready to work. Doesn't look like much, but that could save your life. Here we are, time for a test. This could take a minute. There we go, there's our water. Now, it might not look crystal clear, but it's a lot safer because it's been through our filter. And here's the test, cheers. Tastes fine.